What's up, YouTubers? It's Ernie, Blurred Without Fear. Welcome back. Oh, man. The finale has arrived. And I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't disappoint. We got 42 pages of salvation right here in Dark Knight's Metal number 6. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. When Metal picks back up, Wonder Woman and Kendra are still on Challenger's Mountain, putting in work on Barbados' Dark Knight army. They're not winning, but they're not necessarily losing either. Regardless, no matter how many they take down, more keep coming. Kendra's resolve is beginning to slip, but Wonder Woman refuses to give up because that's just who she is. This is when Kendra comes up with an idea to rally the League by combining the 8th medal of Wonder Woman's Bracers and the 9th medal of Carter Hall's Mace and sends a resonating call to action. And surprisingly, the League answers. Because you got to remember, in the Wild Hunt tie-in for Dark Knight's medal, they got bodied by the Dark Knight. So the fact that they're even ready to fight is just amazing because you got to understand they're fighting with everything they have left in the tank and trust me they don't have much they all wake up and start throwing hands against the core dark knights and this is when mr terrific calls out to eel as in patrick eel o'brien the plastic man still in egg form and for the first time all this series plastic man answers and he goes ham on the Dark Knight, bringing everything Terrific asked for. Bulldozers, T-Rexes, sharks, the works. He also tips off Wonder Woman that they need to go to the source, which is Barbados' Dark Portal, where the Dark Knights are coming from. And they need to take the mace there if there's any chance of winning this. Diana wants Kendra to go because she is the one closest to Carter Hall and she knows his journal inside and out. She knows exactly what needs to be found and how to find it. But Kendra is too afraid to go. She's worried she'll be turned back into Barbados' slave. She says that Wonder Woman must go because she's been the glue that's held the League together since all this started. And she is the only one who can get down there and find the truth. Because that's what Wonder Woman is all about. With Wonder Woman in the Dark Portal, tethered only by the Lasso of Truth from Kendra on the other side, she finds Carter Hall as the Dragon of the World Forge, the same Dragon of the World Forge we've been seeing for the past few issues. And he's prepared to strike her down the way he went after Batman and Superman. Until he hears his name. Kendra calls out to him, reminding him of his humanity, the lives they've lived together, and who he truly is. And it's working. Giving Diana time to dive into the Ford, but not before one of Barbados' Joker Dragons, that's right, Joker Dragons, takes her down. And the Dark Knights are even getting worried because they realize that the Forge is lighting up. But Barbados seems unconcerned and throws himself into the fight, but not before Wonder Woman returns from the portal. With Batman and Superman, and the Trinity is decked out in armor made of 10th metal. <laughs> not only that, but Cyborg, Flash, Raven, and Detective Chimp, the whole gang of apes from the 53rd Earth have come ready to go to war and they brought their own Dark Knight squad. Literally, the Batman of Dark Knight Returns shows up. Vampire Batman of Earth 43, he shows up. Even the Batman from Red Son of Krypton <laughs> is there. There's another Batman in there too, but I'm not really familiar with uh, that particular one. I, I couldn't really place him because he looks a little bit too close to the regular Batman, but yeah, whatever. We don't really get to see them in action. They just kind of show up. Uh, that is kind of the one thing. This book is so big, but even as big as it is, it can't contain every character, which is the only real failing in this book to me. Like, that's the only flaw. 
But they all have a plan, and it's to use the 10th metal with Cyborg's upgraded powers to raise the Earth out of the Dark Multiverse. But the ultimate fool is shot down. So Batman, under Cyborg's advice, decides to do this himself by going to the tuning fork and using the metal. But he can't fly, so how's he gonna get up there? I mean, Superman could take him, but nah, Batman's too cool for that. He's not riding bitch on Superman's back. What he's gonna do is he's going to punch one of the Joker's dragons that is charging him, breaks its nose, and he hops on the back and rides it like he stole it. He also drops a dab of 10th metal to the rest of the squad, granting Aquaman and Green Lantern new armor and weapons to break the Dark Knights. And Wonder Woman puts out the call to get everyone still alive to get into action and help out. Dr. Fate, he returns and frees the Teen Titans. Green Arrow finds Steel and brings him back. And Nightwing and Robin get the Suicide Squad, bringing them back as well, pushing Barbados to unleash his world-breaking scream. And then Carter Hall, the Dragon of the World Forge makes his triumphant face turn, smashing Barbados with his giant hammer. But unfortunately, even he is no match for Barbados. No one is. All the while, the League is taking down the Dark Knights once and for all, despite their pleas for the salvation of their Earths. But Barbados still stands. And as he proclaims, as he always has, that all roads lead to darkness, Wonder Woman tosses Kendra the 10th medal as she races through Barbados' heart. He's down, but not dead. But he's still out of the game, for now. Now, here's the question that I think a lot of you have probably been asking since this video started because where has the Batman who laughs been? Where has he been? He's been torturing our mystery man in the bandages and we finally see his face. Unfortunately, he's not Nick Suotin, but he is a monitor. In fact, he's the over monitor who has been out of commission since the last multiversal crisis. Over 20 years ago, meaning he is the Monitor we witnessed killed by Harbinger in Crisis on Infinite Earths, who's only recently regenerated. And the Batman Who Laughs is preparing to combine the negative energy of the Anti-Monitor's brain with the positive energy of the Monitor, putting that with himself because their energies mix with his own dark energies will cause the multiverse to explode, leaving darkness as the one true constant in the universe. But not if Batman has anything to say about it. And he's been itching to break the Batman who laughs since this all began. They're evenly matched because they are the same person. As the Batman who laughs reminds Bruce, he's not the Joker as Batman, as even some fans and readers have claimed since he was first announced, and even after. That's the problem though, they're wrong. He's Batman without the code. Batman without all the rules, except for the only one that matters. Batman always wins. Hashtag Bat Privilege. And he shoots Batman with the gun that killed their parents. Something he always keeps around as a reminder that codes of ethics only get you killed. And just as he's about to blow Bruce's brains out with that same gun, Bruce tells him to go ahead, shoot. But he wasn't talking to the Batman who laughs. He was talking to the Joker, and old TBWL, or as Joker thinks of him, the Batman who talks. He thinks Joker is there to kill two Batmen with one stone, but that's not the case. Joker's there to help Bruce. And that's when Joker reveals the Batman who laughs one true weakness. He may be prepared for every possibility, but only every possibility that 
Batman can think of. And the one possibility Batman never thought of, most likely, was teaming up with the Joker. And thanks to that, he doesn't know what's going to happen next. And as they defeat the Batman who laughs, Batman leaves him to the insanity of the Joker as Challenger's mountain starts to crumble. The Justice League reunites and with the Monitor they come up with a plan to save the multiverse. The 10th metal, the most powerful metal in existence and never before today has so much of it been on the earth at one time. They must use it to reach everyone because we're all connected through it. Every living thing has trace amounts of it. So this plan should work. And this leads Batman to recall Fulcum Abominus. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Because it's from the first issue of Metal. And I'll admit, this is something I had written off as just some oddball side plot to open up Dark Knight's Metal that would never come up again, but it does. Unfortunately, Flash and Cyborg aren't there to help them make a giant robot, but instead they reach into every living soul and awaken them. Not just on Earth, but across the multiverse. The 10th metal, or Element X, the same element that's inside Cyborg, the same element that powers the new god's technology, Scott Snyder found a way to connect all of it and remind us that we're all a little metal. It all flashes to the epilogue. The world is saved. Barbados and the Dark Knights are defeated. The House of Heroes is being rebuilt. Carter Hall is back and resting to restore himself. And the Justice League is made whole once more with the return of Martian Manhunter and Hawk Girl to its ranks. But this ending isn't as happy as we want it to be because that wouldn't be what Dark Knight's Metal has been about this whole time. Because in order to save the world, they had to do something dangerous. What they did, reaching into the universe with the 10th Metal, wasn't just some deus ex machina. This will have consequences. These events are going to cause Flash War, the return of the new gods, the doom in Atlantis, the dark pantheon of gods, the controllers and dark stars, and the dreaming has been disrupted, meaning we may see the return of the Sandman. All things they've been warned about come from Carter Hall's thoughts put to page before he laid himself to rest so that he could restore his strength. Because in order to save everything, they broke the source wall the boundary of the multiverse, meaning the rules of the multiverse and its mapping will be forever changed. Or until DC decides to do another Crisis on Infinite Earths. And now whatever was on the other side of the source wall, for better or worse, will eventually head their way. Metal was just the beginning, and Earth Prime isn't safe, because they didn't rewind time to before things went to hell. They created something new, new possibilities, and even Batman doesn't know what's coming next. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a plan. Because of the new information Diana received from the Fates, a vision we're not told of yet, and all the new findings from Carter Hall, and the uncertainty of the future of the Earth, they're going to have to change the game. The old Justice League tactics won't work anymore. Well, at least not their old Justice League tactics. Because you gotta remember, this is the Justice League of New 52 still. The original recipe Justice League tactics, they just might get the job done. Like the return of the Hall of Justice. And at the end of it all, cause you gotta have at least a little bit of happiness at the end of this, we can't just leave on such a sour note. We do get to see Damian Wayne and John Kent serenading the Justice League and all the other heroes, even Swamp Thing is in attendance, so it's got to be a gala affair, with their rendition of the Batman theme, I'm presuming because that's what they played the last time. Because we know that out of these events is going to spin No Justice, which is the next big story arc, which will have Scott Snyder back to write. And we know that the Justice League is going to be the biggest it's been since New 52. 
And the threat level is going to be so big that it's going to need multiple Justice League squads. Like, we know that Batman is going to be leading Team Entropy, which is going to be him, Lex Luthor, Deathstroke, Lobo, and Beast Boy. We know Superman is going to be heading up Team Mystery, which will have not just himself, but Martian Manhunter, Sinestro, Starfire, even Starro is going to be on the squad. We also know that Flash is going to be heading up Team Wisdom, which is also going to include the Atom, Harley Quinn, Robin, and Cyborg. And we also know that Team Wonder will consist of, well, you guessed it, Wonder Woman leading Zatanna, Etrigan the Demon, Dr. Fate, and Raven. And we also got news just the other day that Nightwing and Amanda Waller are going to head up a fifth team. So whatever the threat is that's coming, it's going to be big. You can guarantee that. Now, I will say, the questions that we're left with is what was the actual fate of the Batman Who Laughs? But what came of the Dawnbreaker? We really didn't see what happened to him. I mean, we saw him get almost run over by the Green Lantern with one of his constructs, but we don't really know his fate either. Which would lead one to wonder, are they still out there? Either way, this was a great series. I'm so sad that it's over but I'm looking so forward to No Justice. And we also got Doomsday Clock number four dropped today, so I'll be working on a video for that as well. But anyways, let me know what you all thought about Dark Knight's Metal and its finale. Sound off in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And if you wanna see more awesome videos like this one, make sure you click subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers and tap that bell so you know when I post up. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you all next time. Plus Ultra!